in our uh, last lecture, we have discussed about how to create your own package. Okay. And somehow we have also discussed about that. How can we directly call a package? So there are three ways to call a package like explicitly using the class means directly. If you are going to write, write it like this import. Java dot util dot scanner. So this is an explicit case. Okay. Similarly, if we want to directly call a uh, means uh, if you want to import a package implicitly. So what we would gen generally do, we generally call with the name of that particular sub package, right? And similarly, we have also gone through about third case. That is your full name. Uh, so in that full name space, what we generally do, we don't import these packages. But whenever we are using it, so over there, we generally write the entire path. Like if we want to create an object of a scanner class, so we will write it down the entire thing, java.util.scanner. And then based on that, what we will do, we will create a class like this. Okay. So these are the three ways we have gone through, but most in most of the scenario, we generally go for your explicit case or your implicit case. Then later on, we have discussed about static uh, import too. So while the functionality of, in my opinion, we don't, uh, we are not going to use that much, that is static import, but still we should have an idea about uh, what do you mean by static import and all. So if you want to know about the static imports, what we generally do, if you want to just, uh, what we call it as if you just want to, uh, want some sort of access of your static methods, then in that scenario, we always go and we always prefer a static import. So all these things we have covered in our last lecture. So if you have any doubt, so uh, you can directly ask me that your doubt on uh, in this uh, your Saturday. So as you already know that in every Saturday, I'm going to conduct one doubt clearing session. So those who have any doubt, okay, regard not only in the with respect to package or whatever the uh, means doubt you have related to your Java programming language, they can directly ask me, okay, during that session. Now, so in our today's lecture, what we are going to do, if we are going to start a new topic, that is your inheritance in Java. And inheritance in Java is one of the most uh, major means you can say that it is one of the feature of your Java programming language, okay? Not only Java programming language, but it is also the feature of your object oriented programming language. So those language, so those languages who are uh, comes under the category of your object oriented programming language, they should follow this feature that is known as your inheritance in Java. Now, I think all of you have know the meaning of what do you mean by inheritance, but how we are going to use this concept in Java programming language we are going to learn in our today's lecture. So let's start with inheritance in Java. So inheritance in Java is a mechanism in Java which one object acquires all the properties and behavior of a parent object, okay? So what we call it, uh, why we are using inheritance? So you already know that if you are, uh, if you have some property and uh, some some ch someone is having some child and all, so child class will also inherit that particular property. Okay. So same same concept they have also used in the case of your Java programming language is that that if your parent class, so you already know that what our class generally. Uh, uh, means what are the things we have in our uh, class? We have properties and behavior. Properties means your attributes. Behavior means your methods. Okay. So if we if we are creating a child class, if we are, if we want to inherit this class, then automatically whatever the methods and whatever the properties that are there inside this class, all these things are going to be inherited in my child class. Okay. So we will see later on, we will see the functionality of your inheritance in Java because it is a very important concept. Okay. So it is an important part of your object oriented program uh, programming system. So as I told you, so what is the idea? So the idea behind inheritance in Java is that you can create new classes that are built upon existing classes. For example, your friend, friend A has created one class X, Y, Z. Or suppose whatever the class that is, for example, alto. Alto is a class you already know. 
now i want to basically modify this class but i also want to use some of its feature like you know that what is the feature of your alto that alto run alto drive you want to use the functionality of this thing but also you want to add some more functionality in this particular class that is your alto class so it's not like that again you will write each and everything in the, your alto z for example i want to create one alto z class and again i am going to write all these methods and uh, all the all the means attributes of this particular class i what i will do i will directly inherit this class so whatever the functionalities that are already there in my alto class i will get all those functionalities and whatever the cha changes i want i just i can make the further changes whatever the changes i want to make okay so it means it uh, through this example you will understand that you don't need to rewrite that code again what you are doing you are just using that particular code so how to uh, basically create that particular code or how to basically reuse that particular code using with the help of what your inheritance in java now so when you inherit from an existing class you can reuse the methods and the fields of the parent class so we can reuse it okay so suppose if you have created a class and inside this this class suppose you have a method that is known as your addition of two number which is performing addition of two number suppose you want to create one more class and in that class they uh, we are also performing the same thing the method that is your addition of two class numbers so what you do you just inherit that class so that after that you don't need to implement that method okay inherently you in by using the concept of inheritance you will automatically get that particular method okay so moreover you can add new methods fields in your class also uh, current class also but uh, the, this is a very important point is that sometimes the student generally get confused like you have a parent class okay and you have a child class so what you are getting it whatever the things that are there in my parent class i am getting all those methods and your feature whatever the fields i am having okay but it's not like that in child class you cannot uh, create your own method if you want to create you can create your, your own methods too okay so it is possible in your java programming language now so what are the ter terms we are going to used in uh, your inheritance so in java what what are the terms okay so we should uh, aware about the terms or terminologies which we are going to use in your uh, java programming language first term is your class i think all of you are already aware what is your class so a class is a group of objects that have common properties and most the most appropriate de definition of a class is that it is a template or blueprint from which objects are created okay so we already know that how what is a class how to create a class all those things now you already have an idea about that okay now the second part because now we are uh, discussing about uh, the concept of uh, your inheritance so we should know what do you mean by child class or your subclass so sometimes if you are going to use subclass or child class both are same please don't get confused okay so a subclass is a class which inherits the other class so whatever the class you have and you want to inherit that class so the class which is inherent inheriting that particular class is known as what your subclass okay so we will i will show you one example and through that example you will understand properly what do you mean by subclass what do you mean by parent class so it is called as your derived class extended class or child class so if in exam if we are going to ask you about okay you have two extended class so don't get confused extended class or derived class or child class all these things are same okay so these are what your synonym okay of your child class so someone is using derived class or extended class child class all are same okay but uh, so if you are so most probably we generally use the terminology your derived class or your child class right now now we have one more class that is known as your super class so the super sir, are you sharing class, this yes sir, are you sharing the screen yeah my screen is not visible no sir Sir, it's visible. Sir, it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, just check again. 
can your system yes sir now it's visible okay so now we have one more uh, type of class that is known as your super class okay so what do you mean by super class so by the name you can say that okay super class is a class from where a sub class inherits the your uh, feature okay so your super class are known as your parent class base class so we generally use parent class or base class for that okay so by the name you know that you have a parent and you are supposed child okay so it means you what you are doing you are performing inheritance so child class always inherit what your parent class okay so why we are performing all these things why we are using the concept of inheritance because we want reusability so as the name specifies reusability is a mechanism which facilitates you to reuse the fields and method of the existing class which you create a uh, when you create a new class okay so whenever you want to create a new class and you want okay i want all these functionalities i don't want to again uh, write all these methods so it's better to just directly inherit that particular class okay right so we will see the application of this so see this is the terminology which i already told you so if somebody is using super class base class parent class all are same don't get confused okay if in question if you are saying that uh, one you have two parent class so you will say that okay you have two base class or you have two super class so it depends like which terminology you are following so super class then you will, you will have sub class derived class base class you generally use the terminology derived class and for parent class you you are going to use child class so it's up to you like which terminology you want to use so if you want to use this so for parent class you will use super class and sub class is your derived class right so let's take the syntax how we can perform inheritance in java yes any question okay so how can we perform inheritance in java so in java we have a keyword okay if you want to perform inheritance in java there is a keyword and that keyword is known as your extends keyword so the keyword which i have written in your red okay this is a keyword through which we are performing what the cons this your inheritance now now how to write this thing so you already know that at the time whenever you are creating your sub class okay only at that time you can inherit your class after that you cannot inherit a class okay so suppose we already have a super class and you want to inherit this class in your sub class so what how you are going to write first you write class because you are creating a class and you have to mention the name of this class your sub class okay so whatever the class you want to create this is my child class and this extends which class you want to extend your or which class you want to inherit so i want to inherit my parent class so this is the basic what your syntax of your uh, your inheritance if you want to basically apply inheritance in your java programming language okay so extends keyword indicate that you are making a new class so see the, you are making a new class that derives from an existing class so always remember this class should be there okay it's not like that you haven't created this class because if your parent is there then you can create a child huh? so that is the same terminology okay uh, so what you can do so this class should be there so i have already created a class now i want to inherit that class in my new class so this is the keyword you have to write okay extends keyword you have to write so the meaning of extends is to increase the functionality okay so we are why so as you already know that extends means you are somehow extending something you are enhancing some features okay so same thing you are doing it like i have given you an example of alto like for example swift so for swift you know that there are many many uh, for every year you will see that different different features so if you are if we are suppose if i want to create a class for swift class so i have created now i want to uh, create a, like suppose swift desire suppose right so in that scenario all the features will be same but whatever the changes i have made i will implement only those things in my swift desire class 
Now, I don't need to make uh, the functionality, whatever, whatever the functionalities uh, that are there in my Swift class, I don't need to implement those things in my uh, during my this course. OK, so this is the this is the advantage of your inheritance. That is your reusability right now. Now, let's take one example. So in this example, how you are going to perform inheritance? So see what I have done. I have created a class. The name of this class is P. OK, the uh, P means your parent class. So it's not like that you have to write parent. OK, so it depends like whatever the name of your class. Don't get confused like, OK, you have to make your class and the name of that class should be parent. No, it's not like that. OK, so if you want to write whatever the name, you can write it. No issue at all. So suppose whatever the name that is, I have used a term that is your P and inside this class, I have only one method. OK, I have only one method that is your M1 method. Now in now I have created one more class that is the name of this class is C. C is representing your child class. So how can I, in this class I want to inherit this class? So how can I inherit this class? I will write extends. So extends is a keyword. And which class you want to inherit? Parent class. So that is why I have written P over there. Now inside this class again I have written your public void M2. Okay. So M2 method I have created. Now, so whatever members method parent has, it is available for the child. So what the, what the, what I, what uh, what is the meaning of this your inheritance in Java? If let's assume if I want to create the child, or you can say that if I want to create an object of C, okay. If I want to create an object of C, then in C, how many methods you have? You have two methods. Which method? M1 method and your M2 method, right? From where you are getting this M1 method from your parent class, and your parent class is having how many methods? Only M1 method. So it is a one-way process. Okay, don't get confused that this is a two-way process. It is a one-way process. So in parent P, how many methods we have? Only M1. In par in class C, how many parent? Uh, how many methods we have? Two methods: M1 and M2. So whatever the feature, whatever the methods or members that are there in my parent class, I am going to inherit all those features. If I'm going to use this keyword that is known as your extension, right? So let's take examples. And today I'm going also going to show you all these cases. So through these cases, you will understand that, okay, what is the meaning of inheritance? whether uh, your inheritance is a unidirectional or multidirectional okay so we are going to learn about all this so let's see so in this example what i have done i have created a class inside this class i have i have created what i have created a method and the name of this method is m1 inside this method i have just executed one statement that is system dot out dot parent and parent now now I have created a class C. See what I have done. I have created a class C and this class C is extending what your extends. Always uh, try to understand it is not extend. OK, it is extends. E X T E N D S. OK, now it is extends what which class your parent class. So as you as I told you that if I'm going to how many methods are there, we have M1 method and M2 method. OK, in my child class, in my parent class, how many methods I'm having only one method now. Now in a different class, what I have done in inside my public static void main, what I have done, I have created an object of your parent class. Now I have created an object of which class your parent class. Now if I'm going to execute P dot M1. So P dot M1. So how, how can I call uh, this method of pa parent class? I'm going to first I have to create an object because these methods are what kind of methods are there? Instance method. So you have to create an object without object. You cannot access these methods. OK, so that is why what I have done. I have directly called P dot M1. So if I'm going to execute this code, so I will get the output parent. And I think all of you know that why we are getting this output. 
because we have created an object that is what your uh, of parent class and using this reference variable p we are accessing p dot m1 so yes we can access this method with the help of object so that is why we get the output parent only now let's take the case number 2 so in this case what i have done again scenario is same parent class child class in parent class i will have only m1 method in child class i will have m1 and m2 method so as i told you from where i am getting m1 method using the, by the concept of inheritance i am getting m1 method see i am not writing m1 method inside this your child class but still what is happening i am getting automatically your m1 method now now again what i am doing i am creating an object of my parent class this is my parent class and i am creating an object of this parent class so after creating creating the, the object what i am doing i am accessing the value of p.m1 and p.m2 now now as you can see over there inside my parent class how many methods are there only m1 method is there so always remember that whenever you are using the concept of inheritance so inheritance is a unidirectional unidirectional means if i am applying c extends p so what does it mean whatever the features of your p class i am inheriting all those features in your c class but it is not a bidirectional okay it's not like that okay whatever the features of c i am going to inherit in your parent p class so it is not possible in java okay so that is why p dot m2 so my compiler will check whether p dot m2 is there or not so no p dot m2 is not there so that is why if you are going to execute this code we will get an error uh, sorry error in which line this line okay so let's see what output we will get see we will get an error cannot find symbol because inside my your parent class we don't have m2 method okay so that is why we will get a get an error that cannot find symbol p dot m2 and method m2 variable p of type p so that is why we are getting an now now let's take your third case so in the third case scenario is same now here what i have done i have created a child class see i am creating an object of child class now i am creating an object of which class your child class now i want to access m1 method as well as m2 method so as you can see over there inside my child class we have m2 method right but here in this question we are accessing m1 method too so do we have m1 method yes we have m1 method so from where we are getting m1 method by using this the concept of inheritance okay because c is extends p so using this we are able to access which method your m1 method so that is why if we are going to execute this code we will not get any error and we will get the output the first line will print parent and the second line will print here okay so this is what your case number 3 right now now let's take case number 4 so the scenario is again same but in this scenario what i am doing i am using the reference variable of parent class but i am creating an object of child class so you what we are doing we are creating a member of which class your child class but here what we are doing we are creating a reference va variable of parent class so whenever you are doing it okay whenever you are going to execute it so you all as i told you that whenever we are executing our code our code is divided into two times two types okay first one is your compile time and second one is your run time so during compilation time what will happen my whenever we are going to create p p and we are assigning new c over there then what will happen our compiler will say okay here what we are doing we are creating a parent class object or oh, sorry parent class reference variable but we are accessing what which one your child class variable and here what we are doing we are accessing p dot m1 and p dot m2 so what my compiler will see compiler will say that okay p dot m1 is there yes m1 is there so it will pass and it will say okay during compile time it is possible now now it will check 
P dot M2, whether we have M2 there inside my class P, no, we don't have P2 because during compiler time, compilation time, it will check whether we have M1 and M2. So that is why we will get an error. So again, the error which we will get over there is P dot M2. Okay, this error we will get over here. And so you have to note this point is that parent reference can be used to hold your child object. So always remember, okay, whenever you want to hold your child object, so you can use parent variable, reference variable. So it is possible in Java, you can use parent reference variable, but, but by this call, we cannot call child specific methods. So always remember, we cannot call child specific methods. We can call only your parent methods. So it's advantage in the in your polymorphism. So in your next to next lecture, we are going to start this topic that is your polymorphism. So over there, we are going to discuss this issue. So what we have learned so far is that whenever you are creating, whenever you are using the concept of inheritance, so you can use parent class variable. Reference variable you can use of your parent class to hold the address of your child class. It is possible in Java but you cannot access child class methods. So the reason why you cannot access, logically you can say that yes, we can access this thing. Why? Because we are creating child object and child object we have both M1 method and your M2 method, okay? Logically you are correct. But what I told you uh, during that time is that whenever we are creating objects, so when we are creating objects, during runtime. During runtime, we are creating these objects, right? But as I told you that we have two phases, your compile time phase and your runtime phase. So during compile time phase, we are getting a run, not runtime. So automatically, I must say that if we don't get any compile time error, so we will definitely not get a runtime error. But we here we are getting a compile time error. It is because because our compiler is not at all aware that you are creating an object of which class, okay? Like whether this class is having M2 or not. It is not at all concerned about this thing. Right now, the thing which it is concerning is basically based on your P variable. And P is a reference variable of parent class. So it will directly look and find out whether M2 is there or not. So M2 is not there, that is why you will get an error. Otherwise, if you are going to execute this code up, just removing this line, we will get the correct output that is your error, right? Now, let's take one yeah, more. Sir, uh, sir. Yeah, yes? Sir, so in this memory allocation, when we do heap memory, then so sir, how does it happen, sir? See, what happens, the concept is that the parent class is your वैसे ही तुम्हारी चाइल्ड क्लास रहती है राइट तो हो क्या रहा है देखो इसमें जो तभी मैंने क्या बताया था कि इसमें हमारे टू फेज में हमेशा हमारा एग्जीक्यूट होता है एक कंपाइल टाइम रहता है और एक तुम्हारा तो तो सर ऑब्जेक्ट ही तो होता है जो मतलब अपने कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स या फिर एट्रीब्यूट्स वगैरह को लेके आता है वो ऑब्जेक्ट ही तो होता है ना सर नहीं नहीं वो तुम्हारा ऑब्जेक्ट लेकर के आता है दैट इज ओके आई एम नॉट सेइंग कि कुछ चीज गलत है उसमें जो तुम्हारा लॉजिक है वो तुम्हारा पूरा करेक्ट है राइट बट हो क्या रहा है हमारा जो कंपाइलर है वी हैव अ कंपाइलर टू जो ये कंपाइलर होता है ना ये क्या करता है जैसे हम जो भी जिस क्लास का हम रेफरेंस वेरिएबल यूज करते हैं ना ये उसी क्लास में चेक करता है बिकॉज वो उसको ये अभी हमने ऑब्जेक्ट बना तो दिया है दैट इज ओके बट अभी इसको जो हमारा कंपाइलर है इसको एक्चुअली में पता नहीं है क्योंकि ये जो हम ऑब्जेक्ट बनाते हैं ये हम बनाते हैं रन टाइम में और रन टाइम तुम्हारा कब एग्जीक्यूट होता है आफ्टर कंपाइलेशन टाइम राइट सो अभी तक तो तुम्हारे ऑब्जेक्ट्स क्रिएट हुए ही नहीं है रन टाइम में अगर तुम देखो तो लॉजिकली अभी कंपाइलर क्या चेक करेगा वो देखेगा कि डायरेक्टली क्या पी डॉट एम वन यहाँ पर अवेलेबल है या नहीं है तो तुम वो देखेगा कि अच्छा एम तो अवेलेबल है राइट right? वो खाली ये चेक कर रहा है अभी वो डायरेक्टली रूल्स चेक कर रहा है कि अच्छा ये चीज सही है पी डॉट एम भी चेक करेगा क्या एम है तो उसको यहाँ पर एम दिखेगा ही नहीं अभी उसको ये नहीं पता है अभी हमारा कंपाइलर ये चेक नहीं कर रहा है कि एक्चुअली ये तो इसके ऑब्जेक्ट को रेफरेंस कर रहा है बिकॉज ऑब्जेक्ट तो अभी तक आपका रियल में क्रिएट ही नहीं हुआ है ड्यूरिंग कंपाइलेशन टाइम वो तुम्हारा रन टाइम में क्रिएट होता है सो दैट इज वाई यू राइट 
तो ये कंपाइल टाइम एर आ रहा है तभी मैंने बोला अगर हम रन टाइम में तो कभी एर ही नहीं आता ना अगर आप लॉजिकली देखो रन टाइम में तो हमारे पास एम वन भी है एम टू भी है तो हमारे पास तो कभी एर आना ही नहीं था तो दियर इज अंसेप्ट नोन एज मैथड ओवर राइडिंग अभी हमने मैथड ओवर लोडिंग पढ़ा था ना वैसे ही एक हमारा कंसेप्ट होता है मैथड ओवर राइडिंग वेर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दिस टॉपिक इन डेप्थ ये एक्चुअल में क्या होता है वहां पर मैं आपको ये पूरे जितने सिनेरियोज है ना ये सब सिनेरियो पूरे अच्छे तरीके से एग्जीक्यूट करके दिखाऊंगा राइट बट ऑलवेज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड कि हमारे जो ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएट होता है वी वी आर क्रिएटिंग एन ऑब्जेक्ट तो आर क्रिएटिंग एन ऑब्जेक्ट ड्यूरिंग रन टाइम नॉट कंपाइल टाइम एंड कंपाइलर विल ऑलवेज यूज मैथड ओनली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ योर वट योर ओनली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ योर रेफरेंस वेरिएबल सो वट आई कैन टेल यू वाइल इट इज नॉट एग्जैक्टली बट आई मस्ट से दैट की कंपाइलर क्या करता है ना इस लाइन को एक्चुअल में एग्जीक्यूट नहीं करता वाइल ये कहना थोड़ा वैसा लग रहा है बट आई मस्ट से दैट सो दैट यू विल अंडरस्टैंड कि कंपाइलर विल कंसीडर ओनली दिस थिंग ओनली अवर कंपाइलर कंपाइलर को हम बोल सकते हैं कि कंपाइलर कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड कि अभी क्योंकि अभी तक हमने कोई मेमोरी एलोकेट नहीं कर रखी क्योंकि जेवीएम विल एलोकेट दैट मेमोरी राइट सो दैट इज वाई वेन एवर वी आर एक्सेसिंग तो कंपाइलर के अकॉर्डिंग ओके पी इज रिलेटेड टू ओनली दिस पी so that is why we always check for p dot m1 and p dot m2 so that is why we will get an error only with respect to p2 so tabhi hamara m1 hi agar main yahan par likhta na so m1 mein error hi nahi aata kyun nahi aa raha kyunki dekho ye cheez to tumhara logically sahi hai but p m1 to obviously baat hai agar ab ye jo m1 kar raha hai to m1 ki to run time mein to koi issue hai hi nahi na run time mein to object mein already m1 available hai so that is why we will not get any error right So always try to understand that run during run time we are creating an object and during compile time whenever we are uh, using reference variables so reference variables are going to be checked only on the basis of your class reference variable right only now so one more case is that uh, here in this case what we are doing we are creating child class and this child class variable is mapping with your parent class right abhi tak humne kya kiya tha first case mein humne child se child ko access kiya child ka reference variable use kiya child ka object use kiya then what we have done pehle humne parent ka variable reference variable use kiya tha parent ka use kiya tha everything is working fine fir humne parent ka use kiya fir humne child ka use nahi kiya sorry child ka object create kiya Now what we are doing, we are creating an object of parent class. हम parent class का object बना रहे हैं, and we are basically what we are creating a reference variable of child class. So always re uh, remember that in Java programming language, child reference cannot hold parent object. Okay, child reference variable cannot hold parent object. so that is the reason we will get an error and we can not so incompatible types p cannot be converted into c always remember okay so this is the functionality of your java language that a child reference variable cannot hold parent object jaisa humne dekha tha parent variable can can hold child object but child reference variable cannot hold parent object right now Now let's say why use inheritance in Java. Compilation के time पे error आए? Yeah yeah again compilation time error. Right? This is your compiler time error. So here क्या हो रहा है? See इन लोगों ने जो rules लिखे हैं ना according to those rules what we are what they have suggested that कि ये तो आपकी child class है, ये आपकी parent class है. So they said कि child class cannot store parent class so they have created a rule so in that rule that a child class cannot basically inherit your what cannot access parent class right so the reason why they cannot inherit see hoga kya is wale case mein abhi waise maine iske liye ek separate slide bana di hai but still i just want to tell you ki ye na ye wala rules inhone already directly follow kiya hai द रीजन वाई दे हैव फॉलोड दिस रूल बिकॉज अगर हम ये रूल को अलाउ कर देते सपोज जावा टीम अगर इस रूल को अलाउ कर देती ना तो हमारा जो जावा कोड है पूरा इसकी कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी बहुत ज्यादा इंक्रीज हो जाती बिकॉज लेट्स अभी क्या हो रहा है यहाँ पर तुमने 
सी डॉट एम वन कर रहा है ठीक है सी अभी क्या हो रहा है अगर सपोज हम एक एज्यूम करके चलते हैं कि दिस स्टेटमेंट हमारी जावा टीम ने क्या कर दिया हमें अलाउ कर दिया लेट्स एज्यूम अभी मैं आपको लेकर के चलू यस मतलब अगर जो पिछले वाले कॉन्सेप्ट था उसके हिसाब से देखें तो अभी तक अपन ऐसे समझे कि अगर P टाइप का ऑब्जेक्ट ही नहीं बना तो तो फिर C डॉट एम वन पे अपन को एरर देना चाहिए था अगर पिछले वाले कॉन्सेप्ट के हिसाब से चलेंगे कंपाइलर पहले करेगा तो कंपाइलर ऑब्जेक्ट ही नहीं बनाएगा तो उस कॉन्सेप्ट से तो सी डॉट एम वन पे सर इसको एरर देना चाहिए ना नहीं 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 तुम समझ नहीं रहे हो तो वही मैं तुम्हें बता रहा हूँ ना हो क्या रहा है ऑब्जेक्ट देखो जो तुम्हारा कंपाइलर होता है ना वो क्या करता है वो सिंटेक्स को चेक करता है हमेशा क्या चेक करता है तुम्हारा सिंटेक्स को चेक करता है जैसे अगर हम कभी भी लिखते हैं जैसे आई एन टी एज इक्व टू वन पॉइंट जीरो लिखेंगे तो वो क्या करेगा वो हमें यहाँ पर एरर देगा क्यों देगा बिकॉज ये सिंटेक्स तुम्हारा रॉन्ग है क्योंकि तुम फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट वैल्यू ए में असाइन कर रहे हो राइट right? तो वो तुम्हारे सिंटेक्स को ये चेक करता है कि क्या ये चीज वैलिड है या इनवैलिड है तो कंपाइलर में हमेशा हमने क्या लिखे होते हैं रूल्स लिखे होते हैं सो यू हैव टू फॉलो दो रूल्स इंटीजर में आप इंटीजर की वैल्यू स्टोर करोगे आप फ्लोट में फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट वैल्यू ही स्टोर करोगे राइट right? वो सब रूल्स होते हैं अब इसमें क्या हो रहा है इन्होंने एक और रूल बनाया है सी ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर इन्होंने एक और रूल बनाया है कि अगर आप कोई रेफरेंस वेरिएबल सो वो जो हमारा कंपाइलर है वो तो आपका क्या कर रहा है खाली रूल ही चेक कर रहा है राइट सो इस रूल के अकॉर्डिंग क्या है व्हाट व्हाट इज देयर अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस रूल व्हेन एवर यू आर क्रिएटिंग यूजिंग अ चाइल्ड क्लास रेफरेंस वेरिएबल एंड दैट चाइल्ड क्लास रेफरेंस वेरिएबल इज होल्डिंग द एड्रेस ऑफ योर पेरेंट क्लास इज होल्डिंग द एड्रेस ऑफ पेरेंट क्लास सो ऑलवेज गिव एन एरर तो ये ऑलरेडी एक रूल क्या है लोगों ने डिफाइन किया है अभी हम कोई मेमोरी स्पेस एलोकेशन की बात नहीं कर रहा हूं मैं यहां पर यहां पर हम क्या कर रहे हैं खाली सिंटेक्स को देख रहे हैं राइट सो इन दैट सिनेरियो व्हाट वी आर डूइंग ओवर हियर इज कि वी आर जस्ट चेकिंग सो अकॉर्डिंग इन आवर जावा प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज दे हैव क्रिएटेड दिस रूल एंड बेस्ड ऑन दिस रूल यू कैन नॉट यूज अ रेफरेंस चाइल्ड क्लास रेफरेंस वेरिएबल हु विल होल्ड द एड्रेस ऑफ योर पेरेंट क्लास ऑब्जेक्ट नाउ Now I am telling you ki why they have created this rule. Why they have created this rule? So the reason why they have created this rule is just because of this. See, let's take this example. Suppose ये line valid है, right? What we are assuming is this line is valid. Now what will happen? It will check c dot m one. राइट सी डॉट एम वन तो मैंने आपको क्या बताया था कंपाइलर जो होता है वो क्या करता है कंपाइल टाइम में जिसका भी रेफरेंस वेरिएबल होता है उसी के साथ चेक करता है तो सी डॉट एम वन इज देयर यस सी डॉट एम वन इज देयर सी डॉट एम टू इज देयर यस सी डॉट एम टू इज ऑल्सो देयर राइट सी डॉट एम वन एम टू दोनों है ना तुम्हारी यहां पर हमारे पास क्या है दोनों ही है हमारे पास सी डॉट एम वन भी है और सी डॉट एम टू भी है राइट right? अब हम जब इसको एक्सिक्यूट करेंगे कोड को वेन एवर वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सिक्यूट दिस कोड देन इट माइट क्रिएट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी कि अब ये जो हमारा एम वन है एम वन तो चलो हमारे यहाँ पेरेंट क्लास में एम वन ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल है बट एम टू कहां पर अवेलेबल है एम टू हमारे पेरेंट क्लास में अवेलेबल है या नहीं है हमारा एम टू तो एम वन क्लास में है ही नहीं सो वी विल गेट अ रन टाइम एर वी विल गेट वट काइंड ऑफ एर रन टाइम एर सो इन ऑर्डर टू एवॉइड this issue this whatever the case we are getting it what they have made they have made a rule where a reference variable of child class cannot hold the address of your parent class or i hope you got your answer yes sir yes sir got it na see ye actual mein ek rule bana hai so compiler jo bhi aapka check karta hai na wo rule ke basis mein karta hai so jo maine aapko bataya c dot m1 right ye c dot m1 ye kyu kar raha hai ye child class mein method ko kyu search kar raha hai because they we have created that rule okay otherwise agar hum rules ko dynamic nahi kar sakte otherwise hamara output bhi hamesha different different aayega so that is why we have to follow those rules whatever the rules they have created So according to that compiler will just check c dot m m1 is there m1 to hai na kyunki inherit kar raha hai m2 bhi hai but jab hum isko execute karenge to actual mein during execution time kya hoga execution ke time par ye c actually kya kar raha hai tumhara address store kar raha hai to wo 
रन टाइम में पेरेंट क्लास का उपयोग क्योंकि रन टाइम में हमारा ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएट होगा तो इसमें वो एड्रेस आएगा तो वो एड्रेस के बेसिस में चेक करेगा राइट right? तो एम वन तो उसको मिल जाएगा दैट इज ओके और वो प्रिंट भी कर देगा बट एम टू को कैसे प्रिंट करेगा तो एम टू के केस में क्या आएगा एरर आएगा सो इन ऑर्डर टू क्रिएट की यहाँ पर आपकी कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी और कंफ्यूजन बहुत ज्यादा इंक्रीज हो जाएगा दैट्स वाई इन ऑर्डर टू अवॉइड दिस कंफ्यूजन वट दे हैव डन दे हैव क्रिएटेड दिस रूल वेर अ चाइल्ड रेफरेंस कैन नॉट होल्ड पेरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट ओके तो दिस इज दिस इज योर रूल रिगार्डिंग दैट यस Sir, does this mean that there is no recursion in Java? Recursion? No. Uh, in there is a recursion in Java. Recursion is related to your methods. So yes, it is possible in Java. You can uh, perform a recursion. So whenever a method calling itself, that is a recursion, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Um. I thought What? that question is mostly like a bidirectional relationship of the method with itself. No, 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 no. Here we are basically discussing about the syntax with respect to class, not with respect to methods, right? So, यहाँ पर जो हमारे syntax, whatever the syntax we are basically going through, we are focusing more towards your math, uh, your class. So, in class, whatever the methods we are getting it, we are inheriting those methods. सी अगर ये हमारा कोई पेरेंट है सो सपोज हमारे पेरेंट्स के पास थाउजेंड रुपीज है सपोज दे वॉन्ट की ऑटोमेटिकली अगर हम लॉजिकली बात करें तो होता क्या है चाइल्ड को वो थाउजेंड रुपीज तो मिलते ही है ना प्लस अगर कोई चाइल्ड अपने साइड से भी वो इनकम अगर लेट्स एज्यूम कोई और चीज भी सपोज एक एक सबसे बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल है सपोज आपके पेरेंट ने एक हाउस बनाए फॉर एग्जाम्पल हम एक हाउस ही ले लेते हैं राइट सो लेट्स एज्यूम ये हाउस मैथड है अब आपके पेरेंट ने हाउस मेथड बना दिया तो ऑटोमेटिकली अगर हम लॉजिकली देखें तो चाइल्ड को ऑटोमेटिकली वो क्या मिलेगा इनहेरिट करेगा और उसको ऑटोमेटिकली ये क्या मिल जाएगा हाउस मिल जाएगा ना नाउ बट अगर कोई एक चाइल्ड हाउस बनाता है गॉट इट तो अगर हम लॉजिकली देखें वैसे आप ये कहोगे कि हाँ उसके नेम पे ट्रांसफर कर दें ये कर दें वो अलग वाला केस नहीं है बट लॉजिकली देखें तो अगर चाइल्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल कोई एक शॉप खोलता है तो जनरली होता क्या है कि शॉप पेरेंट को ट्रांसफर नहीं होगी शॉप क्या होगी अब अगर उसका फिर से कोई चाइल्ड होगा उसको ट्रांसफर होगा राइट तो ये आपका क्या रहता है इनहेरिटेंस रह रहा है तो इसमें क्या हो रहा है व्हाट व्हाट इज ओवर द मेथड्स वट एवर द मैथड्स वी हैव इन द पेरेंट क्लास वी आर इनहेरिटिंग ओनली दो मैथड्स बट वट द चाइल्ड विच इज वट एवर द मैथड विच अवर चाइल्ड इज क्रिएटिंग दो मैथड्स आर नॉट गो Are not going to be accessed by our parent class. So, my parent को कोई मतलब नहीं है कि अच्छा child के पास क्या रुपया है वो parent को नहीं मिलेगा. But जो parent का रुपया है वो child को मिलेगा. This is a basic example through which you will understand. Okay. Now, so why use inheritance in Java? So for code reusability. So this is our first. Uh, you already know that how we are performing code reusability, and I will tell you one example also. so that you will have a better understanding about code reusability and second one is your method overriding so whatever the concept which i have told you right now again i am going to cover this uh, topic uh, under your method overriding okay so th that you will have a better understanding about okay how we are creating an object why we are creating an object like that okay so this is your first lecture so i am just assuming that you should know that what is what do you mean by inheritance second thing is that which keyword we use whenever we are creating an inheritance and what are the cases okay we can go for whenever we are creating an object now now what are the advantages of inheritance so using one example i will tell you now now let's assume i want to develop a loan module so what i want i want to develop a loan module for your housing loan for your vehicle loan and for your home loan so this is my problem okay problem statement that i want to develop a loan module and where i am i have to create three types of your loan module first one is your housing loan second one is your vehicle loan and third one is your home loan so without inheritance if i am going to execute this code so what i will do i will create a class for house loan i will create a class for vehicle loan i will create a class for what your personal loan 
And let's assume in the first uh, first uh, house loan we have 300 methods. This is just an example, okay? For vehicle loan we have 300 methods. For your personal loan we have the 300 methods. So this is the way, the way we have executed our code, and now our code is executing fine. So we are not getting any error. Everything is working fine. Everything is working great, right? Now, now let's check here. So hence for this example. If I'm going to ask you like for entire loan module, how many methods we have created? So you will say that 300 from this plus 300 from vehicle loan plus 300 from personal loan. So total 900 methods I have created, okay? To develop your entire loan module. Now, now let's assume on an average, one method requires five minutes. So let's assume eight method to agar hum create karne mein, how many minutes on an average we require only five minutes. So therefore to develop it requires 900 into five that is your 4500 minutes that is your 75 hours. So aapko kitna time laga isko banane mein? total 75 hours laga in order to create a uh, developed our entire program. So here what I, what I have why I have written redundancy is high because according to me some of the methods some of the methods are common among your house loan your vehicle loan and your personal loan so aapki kuch methods thi which are common among your house loan vehicle loan as well as personal loan but hame wo implement karna tha and we don't know the concept of inheritance that's why we have created separate three class and the, based on that, what we have done, we have created, uh, we have implemented our entire loan module. So here redundancy is high because there are many methods which are common among these three, what, you, what we call it as your T classes. Now let's take an example with respect to when we are using the concept of inheritance. Now again, the question is same. Now we are using the concept of inheritance. So in order to use the concept of inheritance, how I have solved this problem intelligently, I will tell you. Let's assume, let's assume 200 methods. I'm just giving, this is just an example. Huh? Let's assume 200 methods are common among your house loan, vehicle loan, as well as your personal loan. So that is why what I have done, I have created a class that is known as your loan class and in this class i have created how many methods 200 methods and i am 100 percent sure that all these 200 methods are going to be reused by all these your house loan your vehicle loan as well as your personal loan so for that what i have done i have created a parent class and named as loan which is containing 200 methods now I have created, I want to create these classes, which is your house loan, vehicle loan, and your personal loan. So because 200 methods, I also want to, uh, basically I want to use these 200 methods. So that is why I have used the concept of inheritance where I have extends loan class, that is my parent class in all these classes. And in the, all these classes are having their own different 100 methods, okay? So these 100 methods are different to each other, right? So it might be possible like house loan will have some different methods, vehicle loan will have some different methods, personal loan will have different methods, but there are some common methods too. So for that we have created a super class and this class is basically this. Now let's take in this example that how many methods we have created. So in this program we have created 200 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100. So this is just an example so that you will see that in this example, how many methods we have created? 500 methods. So the amount of time, let's assume will remain same. That is what your five minutes. So overall, how much time we have taken? That is your 41 hours, 67 minutes. Okay. Now, now while in this earlier case, I think I'm having some, is 2,500 minutes. Let's take, okay. But here, how many minutes we are taking? 4,500 minutes. See the difference between them, 
Okay, so that is why we always use and go for your what your inheritance. And now I hope that you understand that why we are using the concept of inheritance so that you just create a class and that for that class, if you want to inherit some methods, okay, or some variables for that particular class in some subclasses, so you can directly perform that inherit operation, okay? So less develop, uh, code development, less uh, development time, your code reusability is high and you have a less development time. So that is why we always use the concept of your inheritance. In I hope you got your answer. Let's go again. So in Java inheritance, uh, if we are using or if in you are working in any organization, okay, and suppose that uh, your manager is not a technical person, person. he's not a technical guy. You don't know the syntax of uh, like uh, what is, what do you, if you, if you will show him this code that he or she is not able to get, but he's your uh, manager or you can say that he's your client. So how you are able to uh, make him or her understand that we are using the concept of inheritance over there? You there is so over there we use some diagrams. Okay, so I think you already have an idea of what flow chart, your uh, your flow uh, data flow diagram, your entity relationship diagram. Similarly, we have some these diagrams too. Okay, like uh, we call it as your sometimes we call it as your object diagram, right, or class diagram. So here, what we have we are using that inheritance will always go for use is a relationship is a relationship, okay? Which is known, also known as parent-child relationship. If somebody is going to use is a relationship in the in your question, so always said, don't ask that, okay, what this is a relationship? Always understand, okay, that it means that we are using the concept of inheritance, okay? Now, so as displayed in the figure that programmer is a subclass, so here my programmer is a subclass, and employee is my super class. So you know that employee all the features with whatever the features or whatever the methods that are going to be applied in employee are going to be inherited in my programmer. But there are many methods in my programmer which are not at all related with this employee class. So I am going to create those class by my right. So if I'm going to implement this thing, how can I implement if I'm going to show you this diagram and if I'm going to show you, please write a code for this. So this is how basically you will write your code. So let's take first you will create a class employee. Then you will create here. Let's take the salary is 40,000 and then you will create a class for programmer, which is extending which class your parent class. OK, and you are getting some bonus over there. And suppose now you are creating an object of your uh, child class. That is your programmer class. And suppose if I'm going to ask you, OK, just print the value of salary as well as bonus. So you will get the output both of them. Because why you are getting uh, a P dot salary of 40,000? Because you already know that because per, this programmer class is inheriting my in, uh, employee class. So whatever the features or data members and your methods, uh, attributes, that are the, whatever the thing that are available in my parent class, I'm all going to inherit all those things. OK, right. So that is why I will get this out. So what is the idea of inheritance? So inheritance in Java is a mechanism in which child class object acquires all the properties and behaviors of the parent class. I think you already have an idea about this thing. So the idea behind inheritance in Java that you can create new class that are built upon your existing class. This thing already you know that, OK, you have created some class. Now you want to create your own class, but that your new class is uh, basically you want to use a functionality of your uh, some existing class. So how can you use those functionality by using the concept of inheritance? So when you inherit from an existing class, you can reuse methods, fields of parent class, and you can add new methods and field also. Also, okay. So these are the things which we have covered in our today's lecture. So this is the last slide. So I hope uh, I just want you, you guys, can tell me that if I'm going to execute this code, what output I will get. Yes. So after that, I will understand that whether you are able to understand this topic or not. And after that, I'm going to end this session. Yes. 
if i am going to execute this code what output i will get i am just going to explain what is happening over here i have created a class named as addition having two members a and b of integer data type having values this thing now i have created a one more class which extends always try to see okay extends is a keyword which is extending what your addition class now in this class we have one more variable that is your c and here we have a method add okay and this method is doing what always remember that all these are what your instance variables right now after that what we are doing we are performing the addition of two number and we are performing the uh, addition and we are displaying this message now inside my main class this is my main class and inside this main class i am creating an object of which class you are of your inheritance class and i am using your inheritance uh, reference variable and now after that i am calling x dot add x is what a reference variable of which class object your inheritance class object so if i am going to execute this code what output i will get yes anyone there should be an error because we are not using the constructor so you said we will get an error so there is no constructor for a and b where we have created a constructor we haven't created any constructor here we don't have any constructor right yes don't get confused here we don't have any constructor so we will see the cases when we are using constructor here we are not using any constructor see constructors are the methods having the same name but here we are using creating only one method that is your add method and this method is not similar to what your child your class name so it means that we are not creating any constructor here we have a default constructor but you already know that default constructor contains nothing right now now tell me if you are going to execute this code what output will get you can use chat box okay so i am getting the answer that is 15 15 the sum is equals to 15 15 so majority of you are telling me the answer is 15 so your answer is correct we will get the output the sum is 15 so you know that why we are getting this output see according to us we have initialized only one variable over here right but as you can see over there we are performing c is equals to a plus b what is a a we have already defined in my parent class and i am inheriting so automatically if i will say that my object will have automatically will have a equals to 10 and b equals to 5 automatically of this class which class your inheritance class of so that is why i will get an output that is sum is equals to 15 right okay so uh, yes Uh, so I have a doubt. Like we didn't define how we are inheriting the class publicly, privately, or protectedly. So by default, how does it inherit the class? See, see. Right now, I will. Uh, I am assuming because access modifier is again a new concept, uh, different uh, topic. Okay, so when right now in our programs we are using only two modifier. Okay, also you should also use only two modifier. That is your public and nothing. Nothing is your default. okay so if you are not writing any access modifier then that is a default access modifier or we are using public modifier so if you are using both these modifier okay like public or default then it will work for public or for private and protected i am not going to discuss right now later in the lecture we are going to discuss about okay because if i am going to tell you all these concepts at a single time then you will get confused okay what is happening what is access modifier so right now my focus is that so that you will just learn that okay what is your what do you mean by inheritance and what is the meaning of inheritance when we are going to cover access modifier then i will tell you that okay when to use public when to use default when to use private when to use protected okay so these are different different access modifiers that are available in your java programming language which we are going to learn later on okay but right now all these programs which we are executing we are using either public or default public means you can access anybody can access that particular method okay publicly available 
like your facebook account if you are if you are not going to lock your facebook lo account then what will happen anyone can basically see your profile okay it means that is a public and if you uh, your default is somehow means within a class within a package you can access that thing so i'm not going to discuss about what do you mean by default so right now just assume it that for public and default all these programs will work okay but for private protected i will tell you what is the meaning what is the scope of those access modifier so we will we are going to discuss those things later on right yes got it so don't get confused with access modifier let slowly gradually gradually we will learn all these topics so right now don't focus upon public private right now later on i will tell you right now what you do whenever you are creating a method make it public okay right now assume that all of you should create a method that is your public method only or either if you or you can use default default means you are not writing anything it will work no issue at all but please don't use private and protected right now don't use this thing otherwise you will get confused so for all the programs if you want to make some practice so always try to use this thing okay so i think our time okay. class time is over so in the next class we are going to discuss some new uh, some new topic related to your uh, inheritance we will just go 